Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and you can see that I'm not at my home in the Appalachian Mountains. This is a Nature at Your Door episode on the road. And I'm here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, at a travel park here at North Myrtle Beach in my van-built, self-made van camper. Today's episode is like my other episodes about marine life. You can check out my playlist on ocean life and seashore life, where I cover things that you're gonna see when you're at the beach. And this is one of them. This is a branch-looking organism that I found on the beach today. And so I thought this would make a great topic for nature at your shore. What is this? Is it a plant or is it an animal? So stay tuned and I'll tell you the whole story of this organism and some of its fascinating biology and natural history. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. The first question is, is it a plant or is it an animal? Well, up until the 1700s, people thought this was a plant because it has a branching stem and when it's alive, it grows attached to the bottom of the ocean. And it seems very plant-like at first glance. But with the development of microscopes, people taking a closer look at this, they realized that this was an animal. And in fact, it's one of the most primitive animals. It's been around for 600 million years. It consists of this endoskeleton, and this has been washed up on the beach for some time, so there's actually no living organisms in this or associated with this right now. Sponges are in a group called the Porifera, and Porifera, as it sounds, are things with pores in them. They're very, very old, maybe the first colonial organisms. And they believe that multicellular organisms all evolve from an ancestor a lot like this. So what is this structure? This is actually an endoskeleton. And when this organism is alive, it's covered with microscopic cells, many of them with a tail-like flagella on them that they wave. They have pores that lead inside this structure. And inside those pores are more different kinds of cells also creating a current and pulling water in. So these are not autotrophs. Autotrophs like plants, plants have chlorophyll, they're green and they do photosynthesis. These guys don't do photosynthesis. They have to catch and eat organisms. So they're heterotrophs, they're animals. And what they're catching is, as they're waving these little flagella and creating these currents into little pores inside the body of this sponge or this endoskeleton, they're collecting bits of organic matter, detritus that have some nutrient value, as well as bacteria and algae in the water, and they're eating that. A single sponge can filter 20 times its weight in water in a single day. So they have some ecological benefits. So again, these are dead. They have no living cells in them right now. But even when they're alive, there's no brain, there's no nervous system, there's no muscles, there's no tissue, and there's no organs. So they're one of them, really the very most primitive forms of multicellular organized animal life. This structure that I'm holding in my hand is held together by tiny microscopic structures with some of them with a very geometric pattern called spicules. Spicules may be made of calcium carbonate or as in most sponges, they're made of silica. One can identify different species of sponges by looking close up at the spicules and their microscope. There are thousands of species of sponges that have been around for millions of years. And these sponges have many, many bioactive compounds in them. Some that are antibacterial, some that are antiviral, anti-inflammatories, as well as chemicals that seem to uh, act upon cardiovascular systems. So there's so many drugs and medicines that have been made from sponges and have yet to be discovered. They're just an absolute 
medical biochemical treasure box with medicines yet to be discovered. Very few things seem to eat sponges. One of the things that does is sea turtles. There's not a lot of nutritive value in here because there's not a lot of tissue or organs, but there is some nutrition there that the turtles seem to be able to find and they're going to be able to break up and digest this endoskeleton made up of spicules. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door here at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm going to walk down the beach and see what else I can find here today. So if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like and be sure to check out my playlists. And remember, I cover all things nature. Frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door here in South Carolina at North Myrtle Beach.